Ladies and gentlemen, the Chief of Staff of the Air Force, General David L. Goldfein. You know, our, our airmen are the most incredible, patriotic, disciplined group. Uh, every one of them joined the service with the nation at war. And, you know, their innovative spirit, their willingness to endure many hardships, to be able to serve in uniform is really inspiring. By the time you get to this level, every issue you deal with and spend time on is hard. It should be. Quite frankly, if I'm working on easy stuff, I'm probably doing somebody else's job and they don't need my help. Uh, so everything that comes to the office of the chief is cloudy, murky, unclear, and you go on a combination of experience, advice, gut instincts to try to continue to navigate in a consistent way. And you know, Chief Wright and I talked early about in our tenure together and, and decided that everything we were gonna take on together had to follow a logic trail that could lead itself to joint warfighting excellence. Three key words. You know, there's so many, there's so many memories that you have over the course of four years as chief. Um, it's hard to just sort of pick one or two, but I will tell you that there was a long journey for John's family, for his spouse Valerie and the kids. Um, it was a long journey for the members of his unit and the special operators. What made it challenging is it was the it's the first Medal of Honor in history that's been awarded without an eyewitness to report on the actions of the individual. The President of the United States of America has awarded in the name of Congress the Medal of Honor posthumously to Technical Sergeant John A. Chapman, United States Air Force, for conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity at the risk of life above and beyond the call of duty. And it took almost 10 years to piece together the story and so to see that come to fruition and to be in the White House when the President handed Valerie that Medal of Honor and to see her reaction, just shout for joy and the other, all of those teammates were in that room who had worked so many years to bring that forward was pretty spectacular and I'm just proud to be part of it. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my privilege to introduce to you the first officer of the United States Space Force, the Chief of Space Operations, General Jay Raymond. I will always remember sitting on the stage next to Chief Raymond uh, when the President signed the paper that made him the first member of the Space Force. And being able to reach over and uh, be the first one to shake his hand as my fellow Chief you know, a guy that I've grown up with my whole career, and then be able to congratulate Molly, his spouse, his wife, on being the first first lady of the Space Force. Um, that's something I'll never forget. That's a, that's a little part of history. Of all the relationships you have as chief, and that I've had as chief, I've invested the most time in my relationship with our civilian leader, the secretary, because if that's a relationship that's built on trust and confidence, then you can do magical things with the service. And it doesn't mean that you always have to agree, but it means you can't be disagreeable. And so, you know, there were plenty of times with each of the secretaries that I was privileged to serve with, and I had the best, right, between Secretary James, Secretary Wilson, Secretary Barrett. I mean, they don't come any better than that. Um, and what I loved about them is that uh, is they, their heart was pure and they wanted one thing, which is what's best for the Air Force, and best for airmen and their families. That certainly made my job easier. But I had to invest in that relationship to make sure that if we wanted to move this service, we could do it together. And so it's my distinct honor to introduce them to the force. Ladies and gentlemen, our 18th Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force, Chief Khalith Wright and his wife, Air Force Master Sergeant, retired, Tanya Wright. Welcome aboard. Uh, my wingman, no doubt, uh, or every day is Chief Wright. Uh, 
he's the guy I lean on the most. When, when I am pondering, you know, something, thinking about it, you know, I touch base with him, and he and I are talking through things all the time. He's taught me a ton about a number of things. Um, you know, clearly, I think most recently he's taught us all about how to think about diversity in new ways. And uh, I think his his essay, you know, Who Am I, was powerful and well received and needed. They don't come any better than Chief Wright. I mean, he's he is one of my closest lifelong friends. He's made the job fun. He and I have a responsibility now for our final few weeks that we have to set the foundation for Chief 22 and Chief Mass Sergeant of the Air Force, uh, Bass, to make sure that, that the foundation is set that they can build on going forward. She's my best friend uh, by far, and I uh, cannot tell you how much I admire her and the passion that she brings to not only an Air Force spouse, but now First Lady of the Air Force. And without question, the relationships that I've built as chief that are the most lasting and the most impactful are the ones that I've built with Dawn. She has been my secret weapon for establishing lasting uh, relationships that I hope we will continue to have for the rest of our lives. As leaders, we have uh, a lot of things we try to get done. There's one thing that is nothing short of a moral obligation, and that's making sure that, you know, for you and your fellow airmen, that everyone we send into harm's way is properly organized, properly trained, properly equipped, and courageously led. And then when you come home from that deployment, we've taken care of your family while you're gone. Everything else, you know, we try to do the best we can. That one, we gotta get right. And our families exhibit a very special kind of courage when they uh, deal with sometimes the long hours, the hardships, the separations, and something we don't talk enough about, the loneliness that comes with uh, a military at war. And so a uh, final thanks to the families for being such an incredible part of this team uh, and what they do, taking care of their airmen so that we can take care of the mission.